Hi everyone, Mehmet is here. Today I will talk about monitoring online exams and strategies to reduce cheating during the tests. Let's get started. First of all, I know it's easy. It is too easy for students to cheat when they are at a distance. But we are trying to uh, minimize it. And I tried different strategies, tactics before. And today, I'm going to share it with you guys, my strategies, my tactics, my practices, because I found them useful monitoring online exams. So I believe you will like them as well. I will give you these in three steps. And the first step is, of course, creating the test. So we're going to use some tactics to reduce cheating when we create the test. And second one is adding a test timer. Um, there's an extension, guys. We will add it. But this is not only the timer extension. It gives you some valuable information during the test. And the third step, final step, is monitoring the test. So you need to help students position their cameras and do some other tactics um, to monitor the test. So let's dive into these steps. Let's start with the first one, creating the test. There are a lot of websites you can use to create your tests online and I am using one of the most popular ones, Google Forms, and it is free. And I will give you some tactics here guys to prevent cheating during the test creation. Let's start with the title and I'm going to write a title here and I will start working on questions. So let's say this is my first question, but I never write questions on Google Forms guys because students can copy the text, copy the operations and search for it. They can copy and paste it in their calculators and calculate it, right? That's why I am writing all my questions on Microsoft Word, then use snipping tool and save pictures of my questions. So I create screenshots of my questions one by one. And then I will upload pictures to Google Forms and they cannot copy the text. They will try copying it and they will, they will realize that it's a picture. It's going to be a good surprise for the students. Next, you can work on the design. And I usually choose a shiny background color, guys, because it helps me understand which window is open on their computers. And I will show you some pictures and you will see why this is important. And the last thing you have to do when you create your test is, guys, um, change the settings. Click this setting option, choose limit to one response. It's an important setting. They need to sign in to do the exam. And then go to presentation tab, guys, and choose the shuffle question order option. And it will give them, guys, different orders for each student. And then go to quizzes tab and then assign it as a quiz. Then I don't want them to see their correct answers. So I will um, close that one here. I don't recommend you to release marks immediately. So choose the later after manual review option here. And you don't have to ask their email addresses, by the way. So you can change the settings and close this one. And one final thing, you can click this three dot here and then go to um, preferences. They also have a few settings here. You, you can assign the default point value here and also you can make the questions required. It's also something important. And you can also write correct answers here, guys, and it will help you uh, mark the test automatically. And of course, you can edit the mark. You can change them if you see some mistakes. If you want to increase their marks, you can definitely do that manually after the test. Okay, this is how um, Google Forms work and I am using it like that. And a second step here is guys, adding a timer. One of the most famous timers, timer extensions for Google Forms is called Quilgo. You can type Quilgo on Google and download the extension and it will appear in your Google Forms guys and you will see the extension at the top. Okay, let's activate Quilgo. So we can um, click this puzzle icon and then configure Quilgo here. So this window will pop up and then you will choose this option to enable it. It is enabled, so you don't need to do anything with the test paper, guys. You need to go to now quilgo.com because that your test paper will appear there in the website. You just need to use the same credential, your Google account to sign in there. So this is the website right here. 
you can see the test paper I created appeared right here. And you can click this plus create test options and then you can add the participant and change the settings here. So let's click this. If you have their email addresses guys, just copy from any, any file you have and then paste it here. So if you paste them once, the website will save them here and then you can use the same list for um, the other tests without copying and pasting email addresses. I'm gonna write down guys if you um, email addresses here and then you see you can have the timer and there are also other settings here let's set it to 100 minutes and then there's a, there are other options you see the first option is auto close option I do not recommend you to use this option guys because the website does not um, save their progress so when the time is up they automatically closes the window you know some students are stressed during the test so they, they forget to check the timer and then when the time is up it automatically closes I don't like it. I usually never choose these options here. I just set the timer and then press this create button here. Some of students have really strange email addresses and you cannot understand, you cannot get their name from the email addresses. First one is really strange and you will have students like that. So to understand who this student is, you can definitely use this um, respondent column to write their names. So now you have the list of email addresses and the name. There is one thing here guys, this is a free account so you only have 100 exam limit for one month. And this is also a really good option. It doesn't send the test everyone at the same time, it asks you to choose participants. You can select all but sometimes my students are late, they are not ready, they do not set up their camera so I don't choose them but others are waiting to start so I choose which one is ready and then send them the test. I really like this feature as well. Let's choose one student here and send the test. Click this send test option and your students guys will get an email. And by the way guys, all of my students have email addresses. Uh, it's a kind of requirement for my courses. Look at the email here guys I received from Quilgo. Everything is clear. It's a test and you can click it, open the form. Quilgo have another cool feature guys. You can also track your students time. You see it says Mehmet uh, did not start the test. so. When you start it and refresh the teacher's page, you see it says the test in progress and it gives you the start of time and when you end the test, it gives you to when the student um, finished the test. Um, this, is, this is what Quilgo does and you see the timer uh, in the student's screen at the top. It's blue and white right now. When the time is up, guys, it turns into a red color. It's good. Okay, now we have the exam ready. We set the timer, we send it to Quilgo, and we can email students, and we can start the test. And the last step is, guys, exam monitoring. To monitor an exam, students need two devices, one mobile phone, and another device. It can be a laptop or a tablet. They are using mobile phones to join the meeting. So we choose a meeting software, guys, to monitor the test because, you know, um, they have the gallery view and you can see like multiple students at the same time up to I think 25 students in one screen. It's really useful. So you can use Zoom and Google Meet to do that. And um, they can they are using their mobile phones to join the meeting and then use the second device. It can be a laptop or a tablet. They put in front of them and then see the exam questions on that screen. So I want my students to place their mobile phone at a distance where I can see their face, computer screen and the paper in front of them. And this is the picture guys I share with my students. And when they join the meeting from their mobile phones, I can see all my students from distance, their movements, where they look and what they do. Here are some pictures from my online exams. These are my students and so you see I can see their faces, I can see the screen clearly and I can see the papers, uh, their, their papers, calculators in front of them. They can also use their um, USB webcams and then uh, position their webcams at a distance. It also works good but you know I definitely recommend them to use their mobile phones because uh, their mobile phones guys have better cameras. And one more thing, the final thing to prevent cheating is you're gonna ask 
all students to turn their microphones on at the same time. It helps you understand who is in the same room. So when they all turned on their microphones, guys, if a weird sound comes from two of the students or more or more students, it means that they are sitting in the same room. Mm, yeah, it is. It is the last method I'm using to prevent cheating um, in my online classrooms. Yes, this is how I am monitoring my online exams. And I think these strategies are good useful and hopefully you will find them useful as well and of course i'm trying to find more efficient ways to improve the quality of my online exams and i will share it with you in the near future what do you think about my online exam practices just comment below and let me know and don't forget to add your questions guys i will be with you in another video about online teaching keep watching mathematics goodbye